Hello there guys, we are at Helsinki Town Fest 2019 and today I'm joined by Mr. Fastfinger, Mika Tyyska. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> Mika is pretty unique player style-wise and... I guess your career started on the internet, to be honest. Can you tell a bit more about that and how you got into music business in general? I'm not sure if I found the business yet, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I, um, my breakthrough project was uh, a website that I created around uh, 2003 or four. It came out in, yeah, it came out in 2005, uh, guitarstretchshow.com, which uh, had a cartoon guitar player who sort of teach how to play the shred guitar and it was kind of half entertaining and half educational kind of website and uh, it was uh, people, all kind of people got attracted to the, the website and the character and uh, huge success for me and a breakthrough and I got all sort of contacts to uh, gear companies and all sort of opportunities and I I stick with the character Mr. Fastfinger and I started creating music with, with that character and uh, I've done demos and clinics and, and shows with, with our band and uh, several albums with this character. So my approach to, to the making music is kind of uh, uh, slightly different than, than for, for most musicians or solo artists. But it's uh, I create instrumental rock guitar music basically with all sort of uh, spices uh, to make it more interesting. Speaking of your music, what are your main influences? Because I'd say you have a pretty unique playing style. At least I find it pretty unique and kind of interesting to... to I, I don't know, I, I don't know how to describe it really. You guys need to check him out because... Yeah, just who were your biggest inspirations? Well, mainly my biggest inspirations were all the same that guys like me uh, all alike had uh, all the Steves, Steve Weiss, uh, Steve Stevens, uh, Steve Lugator, all these same Steves and uh, basically the Eddie Van Halen uh, school of rock guitar. Mm. And uh, But I, when I was, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 I got into Frank Zappa and that kind of got me off-road, uh, I started getting into all, everything but hard rock or metal. I, I was into uh, Igor Stravinsky and Bjork and uh, I, I really loved weird music uh, when I was a late teenager and I think certain things from that area, the, they really have had a huge impact on me. Uh, I like electronic sound, synth sounds and, and uh, I kind of... Um, Many times, many things that end up being played on guitar are uh, kind of influenced by non-guitar mm. kind of uh, things and ideas. And uh, most of the time when I create music, I, I create something else like uh, backing tracks or musical melodies and ideas without the guitar before I start taking the guitar. Because guitar for me is kind of like an endless possibility to noodle and, and just... Uh, <laughs> find uh, new ideas that never end uh, but when I created music with some other other way it kind of it is easier for me to create something that kind of uh, I don't know starts something and it, it, it kind of gets me out of the guitar box a little bit easier also yeah uh, do you think you creating this kind of well I guess we can call him samurai type character mm. did that influence the music you write because you probably wanted to kind of make the character sound as he looks. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, the fact that the character had all this samurai or ninja stuff and Asian uh, in, inspiration uh, was kind of more, more, more or less kind of a accident or just happened to fit well with the character. Mm. And uh, when I started creating music for the character, uh, I started getting more into um, all these ideas and that kind of started uh, getting more impact on the music as well that yeah it's so that 
the character has really uh, and the, the world of the character has really inspired the, the, the way I make music and, and play also for sure. So you're also like well I don't know if a home studio guy but you have your own studio like you came out with an album last year right? Yeah yeah my, my first solo album without ah. the character solo. Ah yeah yeah okay interesting I actually didn't know that part of the thing but like What's your kind of songwriting and recording process? Do you do most of the stuff yourself by your own? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, previously I've, I've released three albums and three EPs with Mr. as Mr. Fastfinger, mm -hmm. and uh, it always involves our whole band, a trio. Mm -hmm. uh, I mainly, I, well, I compose the music, but the guys have a lot of impact on that, mm -hmm. and I really like to, you know respect it. And, and listen to the, the musicians drummer he's an expert in in rhythm sure. and and bass player is you know master of his instrument and i really like they kind of they bring new elements to music and uh but we uh i might compose music at home sometimes we just go to the studio and re record drums and bass and uh, just put it together sometimes we rehearse these songs as a band before we record it and uh, I, I try to make the music as various ways as possible. Uh, so uh, sometimes we've done just drum demos, improvised drums, then I would compose music on top of that. Oh, cool. So because that kind of brings me new kind of rhythmic ideas perhaps. Mm. And uh, last summer I did my first solo album, which was more like a project. Uh, I got attracted to C cassettes, uh, these uh, ancient uh, tape cassettes. Uh, I, I, I got myself a four tracker, this tape machine that I used to work with when I started uh, as a kid, early 90s. And uh, I kind of felt that those days when I was a teenager, I, I could create songs like within one few hours, one or two hours, and uh, mm. that would be a finished song. Now it takes like three years to get an album <laughs> done, and I, I started feeling whether could, could it be possible to make music like that again. Mm. And I, I created a project where I would on daily basis would go to my studio and create quickly right from the beginning to the end uh, a musical piece mm -hmm. compose record it right there wow Re uh, just I had an iPad where I and a synthesizer sequencer that I created uh, backing tracks I would record that in stereo stereo mix of bass drums and whatever synth to two tracks of two tracks of the tape recorder, so you have a stereo sound. Mm. Then I would have two tracks for guitar, and I would record it on the tape, and that's it. And I uh, <laughs> tried to do it all from within, hopefully, 45 minutes. But usually it took like 45 minutes to three hours to finish a song. Yeah. But it was really uh, intensive, like really trying to kind of force you to kind of create the thing on the spot, and and. Uh, uh, I'm still amazed that I could pull it off like that because usually I, you know, I do things really slowly, take some coffee and sleep overnight. Was this melody good? No, I would have several days to recompose a melody that wasn't good for the verse or whatever. But this way I could forget about the tweaking or editing. I would just do it. Uh, it was really refreshing to do music like that. That's really cool. How tempted were you to go and fix something or re-record something? Like, were there any songs like that? Well, c a couple of songs, I'm, I actually deleted some sec parts out, wow. so I could cut it a little shorter. And one song was really promising, and and I realized the chorus wasn't good. So what I did was, the, the following day, I created a new song, which was the same tempo, and I created a <laughs> chorus separately. So I would later on Cubase, when I transferred all the tracks yeah, yeah. to Cubase, I edited them together so I would get a full song. But I didn't go back to the original <laughs> because it would be very difficult to do it that way. But yeah, yeah. But but it was very little of editing needed. It was uh, yeah. But ten years ago, my skills or five years ago, my skills would have been enough good. I mean, uh, the years of uh, heavy working with the guitar and try to make it perfect. Uh, now uh, my playing is such a Way, way much more fluid and my compositional skills are way much better mm. and uh, I, so uh, I might be able to create something very good really fast but it's interesting yeah we gave the album a listen on our way here but it was the car speaker so maybe we couldn't really appreciate the tape thing going on yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. because it has the sound of the tape yeah, yeah for sure yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, we'll definitely check it out again. Again, I'll put links below in the description for the album as well. And one other thing, you are a Hughes and Ketner artist. We have a Hughes and Ketner amp here. Uh, how are you finding the Black Spirit so far? Well, first of all, I've been using Hughes and Ketner amplifiers for, uh, wait a second, from 2006 or seven. So I've pretty much gone through all their models oh. since then, I, at least tested. I haven't had them all, but from 3 amp to uh, switch play to all the tube meisters and and this was interesting because it wasn't a tube amplifier and my first well couple of combos that I played in in some workshops, but uh, it was interesting. And uh, I was kind of skeptic about it, but it actually sounds good. And uh, what's, I think it's incredible how they can pack a real amplifier in such a. It like it's like three kilogram. Yeah, something like that. It feels like a toy, but it sounds like a monster. And uh, yeah, absolutely. It's really uh, continuing the Tube Meister uh, series in a beautiful way. Nice. Uh, I might be filming something at your Tube Master or like the Black Spirit clinic today just to insert a couple of clips of the amp and yeah, thank you for your time. I know you're probably super busy here and oh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe maybe you'll be. Thank you so much for the interview. Have a great tone fest and thanks for watching guys. Links below in the description to check this guy out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well. He has a cool YouTube channel as well. Check that out. Again, links below. So many links below. Thanks for watching. I shall see you next time.